Hello, YouTubers and subscribers. How's everything going again? It's old Swiftwater back down here on the old Gold Rush One. Another day, another dollar. Let me tell you about it. Me and Ben's been down here. He's been working one hole pretty good. We've moved from our last video. We've been kind of, uh, Ben went to where he wanted to go back to because there's some good gold there and he's after the gold because uh, he does his pay dirt bags. And me, I've been kind of jumping place to place, giving about a day and a half day uh, of doing test holes here and there along this claim. Now we found out to be evident where the low sides, where the high sides. Now if you can see the stuff behind me, now I've already been working this morning, but the sand started about right here and went up into a hill. It's probably about three yards of sand that I just ran. Now I usually don't run a bunch of sand, but I do know that whatever's under the sand is probably what I'm wanting to get to, so sometimes you gotta eradicate the stuff on top. And as you can see right now, I'm in a good caliche layer, or a, a wannabe caliche layer, and me and Ben actually finds good pickers and sometimes, you know, half gram nuggets out of this gray stuff. And then on top, I've got another layer of what we call river cobbles and some of the mountain rock. Now, I'm still in the high water mark of the creek. Uh, what you don't see, well, if you can't see, there's cactus behind me. That is the high water mark. Now, we do not, under regardless of any situation, ever go and mine above those cactuses. Number one, the creek's there, and number two, you know, the saguaro's out here, it's a, it's a protected cactus, and we don't want one falling, and we don't want to see one damage. So we always stays quite a ways down, but like I said, you can hear the creek behind you. It's not flooded, but we do have water. Now, when this creek's really flooded, I, myself, looking at the trash line, I'm about two feet underwater, and I'm about six feet off the water now. So that just tells you how much water comes through here. But anyway, today's good video is going to be about one thing. I got a lot of good input on my last video. And a lot of people wanted to know how come I didn't show the nozzles working. Well, there's a reason. Because this video today is on dredge nozzles. That's right, I've got this, this dredge nozzles. I have a lot of things going on. I've bought a lot of no nozzles. And, well, frankly, I'll show you right now. You don't want your nozzles to look like this. That right there, folks, I'm not going to tell you the person that made it, but if you're a dredger, you know what nozzle that was. I'm not going to bash down other companies or anything like that, but that nozzle was used one month of me and Ben dredging, and that's what it looked like. This is what I used to knock out hole or plugs in my dredge nozzle. It's a PVC pipe. PVC pipe, you can see it's nice and rounded off. It's not going to bust those welds. It's not going to do anything like that. That's from wear and tear. That's from, in my opinion, cheap metal and not made the way it should be. Now this nozzle right here I got, I'm not gonna tell you who that's by yet, because we're gonna pop on down here to old Ben Ironman Caldwell, and he's got a four inch nozzle. I've got this three inch nozzle, and we've got a couple other nozzles we wanna talk about later back up the truck after we end this day today. But I'm gonna take you down there, I'm gonna show you old Ben Ironman Caldwell working at four inch dredge, and you're gonna love it. And then I'll come back here later and I'm gonna show you my three inch dredge in the hole and how we do the, uh, the dry land dredging and such like that. But one thing I do like about these nozzles is, I don't know if you can tell there's any difference to it, but there's something different about these nozzles. Uh, ever since I've had this nozzle for a week, folks, uh, a week. Now I got it off, I got the idea from Ben because I noticed his never gets a claw. And I always wondered why. Well. The person that makes this nozzle, like I said, I'll be telling you who that is after a bit. The person that makes this nozzle also makes a dry land nozzle. It's got a spray spout on it, which you'll see probably Ben might has his work and he, he might not. Because he's also using the uh, extra spray jet like I got. But anyway, these nozzles right here, I've had this thing running for a week. I've had two plugs on it, and they're right up here. I just poke and it goes right through. I, for some reason, this nozzle gives me extra suction I don't know why I've got about 10% more suction on my engine than what I do with the nozzle that you've seen that was tore up and the nozzle I'm going to show you later that's a different company's nozzle that did the same thing to me now I don't know if if something's about the where he puts the welds at because the rocks don't hit the weld he's actually got it farther down so it sprays in nice and straight you'll notice this is a straight it doesn't come up here where the rocks hit the welds and break this out he doesn't have an extra weld here for support it's kind of stupid. You don't need it. 
So, like I said, I'm not bashing any companies, but you guys out there know dredging, you're going to know who I'm talking about. You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. The people that don't, well, let's just say, after today, I hope you concentrate on this nozzle because this nozzle today is what we're concentrating this whole video for. And, man, I'm just really impressed. I uh, just, I'm thoroughly impressed. But uh, without ado, let's sneak on down here and check old, old Ben Ironman Caldwell and that big four-inch dredge. Alright, here we are back down here, and you've seen the action flicks. I was showing you how Ben uses this nozzle, and whew, it works pretty good, just like mine will, and you'll be seeing that later. Ben's actually running a uh, four inch nozzle. Four inch nozzle. Right. Now get you a can rock see. jammed in there, you just go in and grab it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to stick my hand in that nozzle. Uh, as you can see by his face, it's it's kind of dirty when you're blowing off stuff and you're doing this dry land nozzle, uh, uh, dry land dredging. Yeah, we're just well, this is just a punch in too. Yeah, this is just a, this is another hole that we made up from uh, a secondary, uh, just because we had he's had rocks big enough that I couldn't move with my pathfinder. I can just tell you that much. It's it's ridiculous. Oh, not, right? So he rolled everything he could back. And he's got to jump up another two feet to come back again. But anyway, this nozzle right here. It's made by the same guy, and like I said, when we get down at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to show you the other nozzles up the truck, and we're going to tell you who, who makes these nozzles, and uh, pretty much show you pretty much all the nozzles that we got. We've got pretty much everything we need to go. Now, you see the difference in my nozzle and Ben's nozzles. He actually has the dry land spray bar on it. Now, what that is, is when he turns that nozzle on, he actually could pump water in front of the nozzle to suck up the dirt without having an extra spray spray bar. But we want an extra spray bar because, you know, well, you're not gonna—that's mud, right? So it's it's pretty hard to get. And you're not gonna point your nozzle up here and just exactly. Blast yeah, you're not gonna blast everything up there. But the thing is, this nozzle is two years old, folks. Two years old. 
And we've used this nozzle, oh my God. We've been, he's been around with this nozzle. There's not a lick of egging or the welds are good. And the only thing that's happened is probably, you know. One big rock fell on it one time. Maybe more than one, but <laughs> that doesn't well, really look like a round circle anymore now, does it? That's right. We deal with the big rocks all the time. And like I said, this, this nozzle, this is why I went with these nozzles because he's had this for two years. The welds are not broke. Now you, you will see that the weld in here like it's not on mine. This is a four inch nozzle, not a three inch. So they want that extra stir, uh, st uh, sturdibility. But I will tell you the way, I don't know how he's did it. I don't know how he's pictured it, but the, the, the rocks do not come up and hit the welds. And that's one of the best things, the most beneficial things that I can see. I think it's gotta be the way that, you know, when you push that jet back in for the Venturi action, it's going a little more centered down the pipe instead of it almost seems up like in so, here. yeah. They almost seem like they're more up top, and it's all that, all that pressure or something pushing it right back up into that top tube of that or something. Now, out of the two years, I mean, be honest. I mean, and no, no bull crap around. But out of the two years, how many times that nozzle ever got plugged? A handful of times, really. That's what I'm saying. It's not even the nozzle, really. It's the the hose more so, and. Especially when you get splits and cracks, you'll notice I have a ton of tape on my hose. Yeah, and we're we're actually he, this is a uh, probably the last year for this old hose. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's been using this for quite a while, so the inside is pretty scratched like up. Wrap it in steel or aluminum. Right. He's got so much black tape on it now, folks. If the if the if the hose got a plug, we just got to beat on it until it comes out. Fifty dollars in tape or a hundred dollars in new hose. Wow. Man. Do the math. <laughs> Do the math for sure. But this nozzle is, like I said, we're, we're talking about, and like I said, I'm going to tell you this is going to come by later on up there because I want to show you the other nozzles that he has to offer too, and the reason why we actually went with this nozzle, and the reason why I looked at this nozzle, and, and you know, number one, I, I got people out there that think I advertise stuff just for money and I get paid for doing it. Well, if you're that guy, you're an idiot. This stuff that I advertise and I put on my videos is stuff that I actually use that I can guarantee, that I can say, yes, it works. If it doesn't work, it's not gonna be in one of my videos. But these nozzles, like I said, this, this last week that I've been running my three inch nozzle, I haven't had anything except for maybe one rock at the edge on the lip, and the rest of it's all been in a hose. So the nozzle works phenomenal. And I, I think I getting, I'm getting like at least 10 to 15% more suck out of the nozzle than what I did with yeah, the, another it's, company. Yeah, it's working pretty good. They, it's just, yeah, a little different build. The strength, the metal is way different. You talk to Sam at H&B Mining Supply or right. whatever, then he talks about- it's cold, metal, folks. It's cold steel or cold weld or something, I don't, something like that. You know, they actually build it for mining instead of Prospectors. prospectors. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, there, but there's two different kinds of people. There. There's miners and there's prospectors. We're miners. We get paid to do this shit. Uh, we don't. We don't mess around. We actually, you know, we eat ground. That's what we do. We sit here eight, nine hours a day. We eat ground. We don't come out for an hour and a half and throw a pan or a dredge or stuff like that. So we want serious working equipment that's going to be built for us. And believe you, I mean, how many nozzles did I go through last year? Three? One in two months or a month. The one you had last year or the year before. Oh, the one on Paducci was a yeah. month. Yeah, so we're yeah. just running fine sands and gravels and you know, you can hear it going up here, but it's it's almost like running pot metal and then all of a sudden it's just, you can hear that sand and gravel just working its way through the back of that nozzle. And, and it, it ate the well, it ate the wells totally it tore out. everything out. You know, when you spend a hundred and something bucks on a nozzle and it's gone in a month just from running fine sand and gravels, kind of a ridiculous. It right. doesn't, doesn't it, make any sense. It know? is kind of crazy. And like I said, we're not here to badmouth any other company. We're just here to tell you what we use and why we use it. Yeah. Because we are miners. We are out here eight, nine hours a day, not a week, a day. And we eat a lot of gravels up. And if folks look, this is a two year old novel. There's not a there's not a there's not even a dent in it. There's no egg. There's no dent. Well, from well that's years. from big rock, but yeah. <laughs> Now he don't have he doesn't have a handle on here anymore because it actually when the big rock come down and smash it it broke the handle off, but the thing still works. He can turn it with a pair of pliers. He can get another handle. He just it's just I don't want to end in their way. But like I said, we're going to show you other nozzles later on up at the truck. 
that we have in the back of the truck that I, I, I have. One is, uh, it ain't really a manufacturer's, well it is, but it's not. It was kind of made, but it wasn't, it's made out of the same. Typical, it's just a typical yeah. thing you'd find out there. I call it, I call it pot steel. It's just not, it's not going to take. It looks like grade eight metal, but it's not. Yeah. Because it's got the, the gold bronze coat or whatever on it, but it's not really grade eight, but it's really thin. And it, but, you know, and Sam, he'll put on, they can add a back plate right here if you really want to make your nozzle last longer. Yeah, like he's here in the, he the talked end. to me over the phone and he was saying, you know, if you really want to make it last longer, they can put a quarter inch plate of steel back here for 25, 30 extra bucks or something. Of course, yeah. and can reinforce it anytime you want. If you're coming into that same kind of problem. Like I said, me and Ben, we come out here and, I mean, I'm talking, these rocks right here, folks, they go through all day, every day. That's a clogger. And these, well, it's, look at that. It's clogger. It'll go in like that. It'll go in like that, but will it travel up the hose? <laughs> yeah. See, the hose is what you gotta worry about. He's Ooh. used this, he's used this hose long enough that the inside scraped up, it scratched up, so there's some grip to it. So every now and then when he gets one that should have went through, Right. It's gonna stop about uh, probably halfway. He'll go up there and hit it a couple times, and it'll go through back in and, and, and get the box. But this is the nozzles that I believe, since I've used a crap ton of them, best nozzle that I ever used. And he's and I've only I only used one of them. I actually got both uh, the nozzles from Sam. One is like his. It's, it's dry land nozzle with a spray bar on it, and then one's a regular nozzle. And uh, the reason why I like them is, like I said, they don't plug up. If a rock comes in the front and they do plug, you just reach out and pull it off. Everything else will go right through. This thing has got more pressure, and like I said, 10% 10, 10 more suction. At least. Yeah, at easily. least. At yeah. least 10% more suction. I mean, I've had it in there, I got my finger caught, and I was like, wow, you know, a three inch dredge, it's catching my finger. It's really doing its job. So it's pulling it out. And like I said, we, we use the extra blaster, we get everything out of the way. We deal with the fine rocks, and then the gold's left in the box. But uh, is there anything you want to put extra on this? Uh, no, I think I covered it all, you know. Hopefully, we'll go over to the box and cover the box a little bit that Sam puts out. It's a great four-inch high banker box, you know. Well, that's true, and I forgot about that. Sam did make the box, too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So the same guy actually made this dredge, too. We're going to show you a little clean out here. He's did a little work in this hole, and like I said, if you can see, I got my shirt off, and he's got it. It got hot today. We're in Arizona. It, it does that. It's cool in the morning. Gets warmer as the is day February? goes on. Yeah, it's mid-February. Is it what? Mid-February. You can't do that up north. When's Valentine's Day? It just got the day before. Yeah, but that's February, right? <laughs> okay, it's February. <laughs> <laughs> Folks out here, we don't we don't know months. We don't know days. We just know when it starts. We, we know when it ends. Other than that, we're out here every day. We're grinding. We do our thing. And uh, we're finding pretty good gold, I, I think. No complaints. No complaints, Ben says. You cannot dry wash this. No. I'd like to see you try. Oh, it would be horrible. I'm not moving rocks like that to dry wash. There's no way. It might not look like the desert right here. But yeah, you're, like I said, we're, the we're in the low, low, like the creek. If we're, if you could see the creek, what we're set to right next Actually, to us. Actually, maybe you could just turn the camera and show them at the end of this. That, yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's face we're level. level. Yeah. Yeah, we're down. We're, this this creek is below the natural creek, and we were below the high banks where you see me spraying earlier. Uh, when I get back over to the high banks again, I'll show you how my nozzle's working. It's a three inch, and like I said, we do it the same way. I set it. Oh, I need some water. There we go. I set it down in a hole. We let everything come to it, and then you kind of pay attention to what's going around the nozzle. You don't worry about where your spray nozzle's going, and we we. What do you think? Four yards a day at least, maybe? It's getting close. This stuff's been a pain in the ass. You know? Well, this is all this is all mud. You gotta break, I mean, break it up and then you yeah. gotta pull the grass roots out. And the reason why we're in the grass roots, like I said, this secondary creek channel's got it's got a lot of good gold in it, folks. Two, two guys, you can go crazy. One guy blasting oh, yeah. the hell out, turning oh, the blaster yeah. up high, and then one guy manning the nozzle. But you gotta pay attention to your clogs, and you gotta shut down. You just let stuff going in there, you're going to get clogged somewhere. Hell yes, exactly. But that, like I said, this is just one of the things. Like I said, this is a this is his four inch nozzle. We're going to throw show you the three inch nozzle on mine, and then we'll show you back at the truck later on today. We're going to show you the uh, three inch nozzle with the spray bar on it, 
And then I'm going to show you another three inch nozzle that was made by another company that did the same thing, just took a little longer, probably about, what, five months, four I months? I think it was that, really. You think it was that long? I, 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 I thought it was a little longer, well, you had the, but the it did one the same nozzle, thing. You had the one nozzle for a month and that went out, and then you had that one that had like the dry land attachment right. welded we cut, over it, and you cut that dry land attachment off of it. But then it still egged. It's yeah, still, they, they both egg. Like the first one egged in the first month, and then that one egg. Yeah, I but mean, then, folks. I mean, really, it's 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 about the pitch of the way it's forcing in. For some reason, Sam's got this nozzle dialed in. And man, if you're dredging with anything else, I you know I know there's other nozzles out there, but the pictures that I've already showed you and the pictures that I will show you. No, the price is right. Like one twenty five. Yeah. It's gonna last you a season and a half, two seasons. I mean, it's been two seasons easily. I will probably get three or four, depending on. And heck, old Ironman still got his two-inch nozzle in the truck. Yeah, you still got that it's, one. It's still there, and he's oh, used you... the Dickens out of that. So, unbelievable, cool. But anyway, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, Ben's shut down here for a little bit. I'm gonna bring you back when he, he's gonna clean out his top mat. We call it a cheater mat. And if you've watched my last video, video, you're gonna know exactly what that cheater mat is for. That way he knows he's on the gold, or if he's not on the gold, if he's not on the gold, you're going to pick up and move. If you uh, are on the gold, well, you're going to stay. <laughs> so we're going to bring a cool clean out of that here in a second. But yeah, this I just want to get Ben's input on the uh, four-inch dredge nozzle. Like I said, I'm running a three, he's running a four. And he's run it for two years. And folks, I don't see a wear or tear one except for where he had a rock fall on it, <laughs> which that's... Typical. Is that what happens when you undermine? That's what happens when you undermine a rock. Anyway, hang on a second. We're going to bring you back and we're going to show you, like I said, his top cheater mat, a little clean out, and a little gold. Stick in there. Okay, now we're back here. Like I said, we're going to show you a clean out on Ben's top mat. Now, this is what we call a cheater mat. The reason why we call it a cheater mat is because we do not have to clean out the main box, which is really beneficial. Yeah, you can <laughs> run a couple hours. I think Sam recommends you clean out every hour and a half if you're running good enough, you know, just to check your top mat. You can. I've run the lower sluice for three days before I cleaned out. Seems like it's probably about the way to do it. Now he's also got three inch diamond raised metal in his box as well as I do. Remember what I was telling you about the last video? I can run three days and not have to worry about it because that stuff is not going to lose the gold. Should probably pull the top off and show him the crash plate and the fine gold recovery. Let's area. just do that. Like I said, yeah. let's let's just clean this out. Yeah, we'll do the top first and then pull the box apart and I can give you a quick look into the actual fine gold recovery area. I won't clean it Wing out. Wing nut and a washer. Yeah. Pretty easy, simple. You gotta set them somewhere safe or you'll lose them every time. You Which, put that I got that in my hand. You're I'm right. good. Yeah, I've already lost mine, so <laughs> So first it has, you know, about a sixteen by twelve or fourteen expanded metal over miner's moss. And it's not hard to clean the miner's boss out. Underneath the miner's moss, just as a regular sluice box, you got the fine V-rib matting. There is gold in that. Definitely. Well, Remember yeah. now, on our miner's moss, we do not use back miner's moss because if the gold can dig down and get in the ribs and replace it with something else, that's more beneficial than us getting so loaded up with black sands that it does not continue to catch gold. So we like the unbacked miner. You just throw that right back in, actually. And that's about how fast you clean the cheater mat. Oh, and I found you can put the expanded metal in either way. It doesn't matter. Because, I mean, you're pushing water up yeah, it's and it's coming down. The riffle's going to work kind of vice versa. I mean, you're going up and down. If with you, water. if you, I, I, in my opinion, if you get one of these boxes, just do what's best for you, and not what we do. I mean, we show you what we do, but you know what? Somewhere else, if you do your homework, you know what kind of gold you're getting. So it might be versatile with Jeffrey. So put that back in. The wing net on. Now these boxes are not small. But right. they're not heavy. Solid. 
Yeah, it's solid, but it's not it's not so heavy you can't move it. If you want to pull that uh, top off, just that wing nut down there on the lower and pull the... You gotta take, you're going to take down the, the, the bottom mat? No. I was just going to show them the inside of the... Underneath. Yeah, well, I don't know if I want to do that here. Well, I want to show them the inside, actually. I'll pull that in. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll bring you back and I'll show you a picture of the inside here lately. Like I said, all this three-inch diamonds has got a lot of black sands in it. I'm not going to clean it out. I just want to show them. I was going to say, don't clean that out. That's no, too I'm much. I'm not going to clean it out. And but folks, can, the reason we why we don't want to clean it out more than one time a day, because you would not believe how heavy the buckets are when we walk up that hill behind me. Woo! And I'm pretty sure I'm going to pan about half the gold back in the tub, so... Catch it up, always make that. True enough. Now, like I said, Ben has got this. Ben's got the box off of Sam. Uh, my box comes from Chris Miller of Prospector's Choice in, in Arizona. Uh, I like how both of them are made. They're kind of similar, but not even close to the same. He's got the alluvial fan. Chris Miller does. Uh, Sam here, he he'll, he builds a straight box, but for the, the fine and gold, I don't think we're we've ever gotten hurt. So. We're both good, and I like I like the way my box works. I like the way it looks, and I like the way it catches the fines too. Yeah, there's no gold. We got skunk. He's like, yeah, right. We don't never get skunk. It's can you probably going to be more impossible to see, but can you pan it down anymore? It's all pure black sands. Well, there's a lot of it in there, that's for sure. Maybe see some color. There's a little picker. See, you got, he's got, he's got good chunky gold. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a lot of finds. And look, there's three more pieces down there. So, and then look, we got the lead. We got some lead. We got the lead. Hold that a little higher. There you go. When you start on this claim, if you start finding the lead, you're going to find the gold. That's what's pretty exciting. Some lead. <laughs> Little tiny piece of gold. And the buckshot. But anyway, like I said, that's that's pretty much what we find out here. Lead and, and gold. And a ton of fine micro gold. Yeah. Like I said, at the end of the day, we'll show you some pictures of, uh, of exactly what we're finding. He's finding chunkier gold here. Where I'm at right now, I'm running about, what do you say, four feet of sand? Gonna be all flood. Micro yeah, it's gold. it's all flood micro gold, but then there's stuff underneath it, and that's what I want to get to. Down on the tail end, right before it turns back. Exactly. There's a big question mark claim I got here. It's just, just gold everywhere. The question is, how much? Do you and and where's that at? <laughs> no doubt. But anyway, there's the top clean out of Ben's box. Uh, it made by the same guy that makes that nozzle. Ben, like I said, he kept the same guy. I'm really impressed. I like the box. I went with Chris Miller's box because I like the alluvial fan motion better. Uh, but his box works great and has always done good for Ben. The nozzles are phenomenal. Phenomenal. They don't get plugged up, folks, and that's the best thing about it. I could give him that. I've had a week of working this nozzle hard. And I think maybe I've had two rocks in it where I've actually had to jam my PVC pipe no, in I the nozzle. I should have seen this guy cussing and cursing. It's like a clog every 20 minutes and then shutting his engine down and trying to get it out of somewhere and somehow. And it's I, just, yeah, I wasn't impressed with that. Wasn't a, a wasn't a good day, right? Every day. Every We're day. Doing it every day, three times a day. And if you ain't never been around me, folks, if I get upset, <laughs> I get upset at everything. And uh, that's just the way it works. But man, for these nozzles right now, I'm really impressed and I'm, it's really, I'm on top of the game. But anyway, I'm gonna let Ben get back to work here. He's got some more mud, grass, rocks, and I'm not throwing those rocks. I'm working over the small ones today, but he's got everything in here, plus some decomposing bag rock. He's gonna get some chunky pieces like you just seen out of that, uh, that pan right there. And I'll tell you what, after eight run, you're looking at maybe, you could probably pull at least two grams a day out of chunkies out of here. Hopefully. Yeah. It's not, it ain't easy. Trust me, there's nothing about gold prospecting or gold mining that are, is easy. It and takes a valid effort. It takes a big effort. <laughs> if you want to come out and dig a couple shovels, you're going to find a couple shovels worth. If you come out and do what we're going to do, like we mine stuff and we stay out here eight hours a day, 
do nothing but keep the motors running and sucking dirt all day long. We come up with two grams, sometimes three a day, depending on where we're at, what we're finding, and what size of gold, yeah. pretty much. So, but anyway, I wanted you to see Ben's. We're gonna go back over here later where I'm at. You can already tell it's getting warm out. I already took off my overshirt. He's already got his overshirt on, and these waiters, whoo! He'll be down on GPA A, time 89. <laughs> That's just where we start at, no weird. But anyway, like I said, well, I'll get down there and I'm going to show you guys this three-inch nozzle. So, uh, is this one of the cleater claims? Right. Is this Maverick Seven or Maverick Nine? He's in. You're in between. <laughs> you're in between them. But anyway, I'm going to let Ben get back to work. And uh, like I said, I'm going to take you up here and show you how my nozzle works and how I, I how I do things too as well. And then after that, we're going to be uh, ending the day up the truck, uh, where we're going to have all the nozzles except for the ones actually on our hoses. We're going to have all the nozzles up in our truck, and we're going to do a recap and just. Uh, figure it out so that's what we're gonna do anyway box is in stuff's in nozzles in the water fire in the hole start the engine <laughs> get, get the it running Parker get it running Parker <laughs> get it running all right now you can see I'm back down here in my little hole that I'm doing and you can hear the dredge picking up everything in the world I got my box set pretty aggressive because I do have the three inch diamond but if you look at this You'll see this great, this great bleaching layer. Now this great bleaching will break up. It's got gold in it. Just gotta throw out the rock. Right now I'm pulling all the sand off, which I'm finding really good fine gold out of this sand. It's been building here for years. But like I said, my three inch nozzle, I don't care what, what it is, it does not clog. I love the way my box runs. I love the way the nozzle runs. The nozzle is phenomenal. I cannot, I cannot speak more about this nozzle. I mean, the less plug that you have when you're running an extra water nozzle, it's really hard to clear your or an extra water pressure blower. It's hard to clear things out of your nozzle and hang on to the nozzle itself. It's that hard. So, but anyway, it's gonna work good. I got a little bit of leeway, just a hair. We gotta put this up a little higher. Now you see I'm going up in the high bench because I wanna bring that sand right back to me before I clean out these rocks. Reason being, these rocks still hold gold on top of this gray clay layer. You can actually, like I said, you break these rocks apart and you can get in that gray, but I want what's on top of the gray in, in the gray. This stuff is just overburdened. I gotta move it, so it's gotta be done. But anyway, like I said, these nozzles work great, folks. Breaks up nice after the water goes across. I'll never use another nozzle in my life. Unless he stops making them. <laughs> Just as good as a four. Set it in. It does 
doesn't get clogged. Man, I'm impressed. Made my work a whole lot easier. All right, I'll be seeing you guys later back in the truck. Woo! All right, folks, now we're back up here at the truck. It's been a good day. Ben's got a little gold. I got a little gold. We'll probably be, maybe be, if I continue shooting this video back up the camp. I know how you guys love my long videos. Anyway, whew, obviously Ben's boots got a leak in it. <laughs> Lower he caught some water in a rip. Feels good on a, on a hot day. And as you can tell, well, I found a mud patch for dang sure. Holy mackerel. But anyway, it's been a great day for dredging, dry land dredging. Uh, it'd be alright for dredging dredging, but we don't have a uh, hot water warmer. And the water is probably about, what do you think it is? 50-ish? About 50-ish degrees. It's not, it ain't great, but it ain't bad for the arms. It ain't good when you get a blowback like this on my shirt and it hits you in the, I don't even know what's on my face. Anyway, it's a lot of dirt, a lot of mud. You might want to stop with the doctor's office. Right. I can totally understand that. But anyway, like we were getting back to the nozzles, we're back up here at the truck. This is where we got our extra nozzles now. This nozzle right here, this nozzle right here is the other nozzle besides the pictures that I showed you. This is a different nozzle. Now you'll notice, for one, it's got a, a way... I don't know why they got it so long on the end for, but as you can see where the tapes are, or the tape marks are, there's a hole in the weld here, there's a hole in the weld here. This nozzle lasts me, and I actually bought this nozzle used about, I'd say a year, right? Or a half year, maybe? Not even that. Not even that. I mean, it's been, it's been banged on pretty seriously. You can kind of see this hook back is not actually pointing Straight. down the center yeah. of the, which is just probably... I know it could be a production error, you know. You're going to want this kind of down the center and coming through there instead of maybe not kick back up and pushing the rocks up against the back up here. Causing and see, that. in my belief, I believe in this thing here, this is a weld, this is extra thing. Now, on his, he's got a two-inch intake. This weld might be necessary. On a three-inch, this extra weld is baloney. You don't need it. It's, no. th if this anything, metal is not going to bend. If anything, you could probably just make that a 45 and weld it back to itself. Yeah. That's not going to... This I weld mean, this weld weakens the tube. It could prevent... Well, yeah, even if a rock falls on there, you're probably going to get a smash in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, we've this is where our, this is where our holes come from, is these welds. Now, I'm not saying the welds suck because, well, well maybe they do suck. I don't know. No, it's just probably the metal and it's, the weld. It's and just the metal it is, like I said. This is probably great, but the metal that they're using, you know, the muffler exhaust or whatever is Walmart. Yeah. And, I mean, if you look in this, you could really see the, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can see, see the eggs. And then this right here, this has been two and a half inch. This has been two and a half inch? Yeah. And this is from Sam the Poor Man as well, right? Right. Okay, now Sam the Poor Man is the guy that we've been getting these from. He's out of California. It's uh, H&B H H Mining. H&B Mining. You can look them up, or I will put the link down below, number one, for his eBay, and number two, for his actual web page. Yeah, you can find his nozzles on eBay easy, just a dredge, dredge no nozzle. nozzle sluice. Yeah. Anything come up, dredge sluice, you'll see it, you know. But this has been his two inch, and he's got this, what is this, three years old, two years old? Yes, yeah, like three years three old. Three years old. Uh, now you'll notice there was not the spray nozzle because we actually he kind of counteracted parts on his other one because uh, it's a, we do it's, things like that. It's a Frank, Franken nozzle. <laughs> it's a Franken nozzle. <laughs> but you'll see the same thing. How he's got it coming in. If you look into it, it's just it's straight down the it's straight down the uh, pipe. The things did great. It's and it's not. Look, there's no dents. There's no wear. It's no tears. No bubbles. No holes. I mean, folks, and this is what, three years old, two years? What three. is it? Three. Three? Yeah. And that's a two-inch, and he used the dickens out of this before he got that four. Now, when I bought my other nozzle, this is a nozzle that I haven't used yet. This is his dry land nozzle. And you will see that, number one, he's got the nice ring out here, which, man, stops clogs all the time, man. I don't have, I love it. I don't have any clogs anymore. I don't have to joke around and mess around with clogs in my nozzle 
jam things in here. I got a PVC pipe just in case it does happen, but nine times out of 10, it's at, it's at the top of the hose going in the box. It's the hose, not the nozzle. And then you can see he puts the uh, dry land spout on there so you can turn it on either high or low. And it works phenomenally. Like I said, I haven't used this nozzle yet. I'm saving this nozzle for a special place and maybe a special video. Uh, but I do thank him for sending me this other nozzle as well because I wanted to try both of them out uh, because I know this year we could do dry land nozzles, uh, dry land uh, dredging with these nozzles, but we happen to actually have both we got two pumps a piece so why not have the extra power to blow the dirt and the mud and some of the caliche or it's starting to be caliche and not quite yet but where some of the good pieces are yeah when you get down deep enough you got to devote all your water to the suction too. right that's another thing too when you get down deep enough you can you can put this on for a minute get a pool of water turn it off and then you suck up everything or get to a a level where it works you know yeah and like i said this nozzle's not been used yet i got a special place i want to use this nozzle and it's totally dry uh except for just a little bit of water and i think that that little bit of water with one pump is going to work really well on this so i mean for me and i can't i mean i could say for me and ben but i think ben spoke enough for himself uh the guy out of california sam the poor man his nozzles are spot on they work like a charm. Um, the only reason why I went to these nozzles is strictly because I've been mining with Ben for three, four, I don't, four years. we've been out here a couple days, folks. And then, and like I said, last year, I'm jamming, I'm jamming the PVC pipe down my nozzle every freaking day, every freaking hour. Right. And he's over there laughing his butt off at me. Shut so his, you have to shut his engine down. Go yeah. Back, and it's a pain out. in the butt when you got to shut everything down and come back and get everything out. But like I said, I've seen him and he has no clogs. I switched to these and I've been using that one nozzle that you've seen today for a week. I might have stuck a PVC pipe in it twice because I thought it was in the nozzle. It wasn't in the nozzle. The plug was in the top of the box uh, right at the hose. Uh, so I'm kind of impressed. You, yeah. I mean, I don't are even, you ever going to buy another nozzle? I don't even remember using any other nozzle. I, so, yeah. I mean, honestly. he's... Like I said, we're not here to bash down any companies, folks. We're just telling you the stuff that we use every day that lasts and that makes the difference in working. I mean, you could get irritated, upset, mad every day of the week, and you're not going to enjoy doing what we're doing. But when we're doing like what we're doing, man, I have fun every day, and it doesn't really stress me out. At the end of the day, I go home, clean up, and gram two grams of gold every day. I'm... I'm feeling pretty good about myself, and I know Ben is. He's really on the chunkies, and the, we're going to try to show you some stuff back here uh, later on at the camp. All right, folks. Well, is, in case you haven't noticed, there's been a scenery change. There, <laughs> after we come back out of the plane, uh, we have had three days of rain, and it is really cold. So what we did is we come back to the house, brought the gold cube back, clean up the gold. We will be putting pictures on of the gold after after the video, so we'll show you the big, the smalls, and everything. We're kind of finding it down here and in between dry land nozzle. And uh, but yeah, like I was saying, the dry land nozzles that Sam makes, they're darn good. I have nothing to. There's nothing bad to ever, that I can say about it. Uh, they work fantastic. He's had his for two years. I've had mine now for a couple weeks, and man, I'm really loving the, the non the no. No plug-up section. Let's just put that one. But anyway, like I said, I like to think it's Sam the Poor Man, and I'm going to put both links as eBay and the H and yeah, H and B mining. H and B mining supply. supply. That's just probably going to be his main web page. But like I said, we'll put both of them down below, or if you get a chance, uh, you can just go on venture out on your own and uh, check him out. But dang sure, they work, <coughs> and I'm, I'm happy with it. And I know Ben's happy with this. So, anyway, without ado, we're going to get this clean. Stick around for the pictures. And, well, for me and Ben Ironman Caldwell, we're out of here. Later. And remember, get out there and start living life before the life in there to start living. And I, we may see you in the gold fields. Take care. Stay off my plane. <laughs>